All right. So you've gotten the diagnosis of diabetes, probably type 2 diabetes, and your doctor wants you to watch this video just to give you a brief overview of what diabetes is. You've probably heard about it already. Um, basically, it's a problem with your ability to handle glucose. Glucose is simple sugar. So uh, sugar is like what's in your sugar jar, the white stuff. Um, it's also, there are other types of sugars, sugars in fruit, sugars in juices, artificial sugars. But basically, your body has trouble dealing with basic sugars. In addition to that, it also has trouble dealing with starches or carbohydrates. Carbohydrates or starches are actually a long line of sugars. In other words, carbohydrate is made up of a lot of different glucoses. When your body sees a carbohydrate or a starch, like bread and pasta, beans, etc., your body breaks those carbohydrates down into sugars, and now we're back to your original problem, which is having trouble processing sugars. So with diabetes, your two main sort of prime directives um, is really to watch your sugars primarily because Again, your body has trouble dealing with sugars, and secondarily, having trouble with carbohydrates because carbohydrates are just a long line of sugars. Now, diabetes comes with it a lot of risks, risks increased risk for heart disease, increased risk for vascular disease, increased risk for stroke, uh, amputation, uh, infections prolonged, erection problems, um, eye problems, and blindness. And so the reason why your doctor is sort of jumping all over this new diagnosis and getting you plugged in to take a lot of different medications is because we really want to decrease your risk for getting those things. And we found that if we make certain interventions early on, we can decrease your risk for all those things. If you either drink a lot of juices, a lot of soda, things like that, you're going to have to cut those out because they're full of simple sugars and those sugars drive up your blood sugar. Um, in addition to that, if you are a big rice eater, or pasta eater, or bread eater, you're going to have to cut that down. Not eliminate it altogether, but you're going to have to cut it down fairly significantly. If you can increase the number of fresh fruits and vegetables, you're going to increase your overall health and decrease your risk for a lot of other things in addition to helping your diabetes. Um, exercise. We've been talking about exercise. People have been talking about exercise. Well, now's the time. If you really kick in in terms of some exercise, you're going to be able to improve your, your blood sugars, which is the, you know, how much sugar is in your system at any point because when you exercise, you, you burn energy, you burn sugar. So that's going to make it so whatever sugar you have in your body, it's going to go down. So exercise is a positive thing for people with diabetes. People sometimes ask, what about diet pop? What about um, diet teas and whatnot? Can I drink those? Well, the jury is out on a lot of that. Surely, in terms of what I've been saying all along, it has less sugar in the form of sugar in it because it's in the form of aspartame or saccharin or whatever else is actually in there. But some people believe that it sort of fools your body into thinking it's sugar and still causes you to store uh, fats and things of that nature so that maybe it's not all that healthy anyway. But that's maybe. I think if you're, you're way ahead of the game. If you can exchange regular pop for a diet pop, especially if you drink a lot of it, you're going to be way ahead of the game. You're going to be able to lose some weight. You're going to be far better off. And then you can worry about whether you're drinking diet sodas or diet teas sort of down the line. So, I mean, if you can make that transition, if you're a person that drinks a whole bunch of uh, certain name brand sodas every day, you're going to need to switch over to the diet versions of those because you know, that's just going to be better for your body to deal with in terms of this new diagnosis of diabetes. In terms of the management of your diabetes, the first thing your doctor is going to do, if this diabetes has been found early, is to do what they call lifestyle modifications. 
lifestyle modifications is what things can you do short of getting a medication that will help you with your new diagnosis. So that's um, cutting down your sugars if you eat a lot, cutting down your fats, getting some exercise, um, drinking more fluids, walking more, lose weight. If you could do all those things, it's possible that your blood sugars will come down and the diagnosis of diabetes will sort of be pushed off a little bit. It may not be as big a deal right now as it, as, as it, as it is right now. If lifestyle modifications don't improve, so let's say you are very, you exercise a lot, you don't eat a lot of sweets, you do all the right things, and your blood sugar is high, you diagnosed diabetes, well then you need to be on medication. And also, if you, if you make all those changes and nothing improve enough, you're going to need to be on medication then too. So here's the thing. Look for them to start you on a certain set of medications. Almost all doctors would start you on um, metformin, for example. Metformin at a dose, you'll probably start taking it once a day, but ultimately it'll be a twice a day medication. Everyone goes on it first. It's fairly well tolerated. And what's neat about metformin is if you fall off the wagon and really just eat a bowl of ice cream or something, you're going to get diarrhea. So it sort of it sort of trains you into eating a little less fatty fatty foods. But uh, the main thing is it's it's, it's relatively safe, and uh, it's going to be your first line. It's inexpensive, so everyone's pretty much going to be put on metformin. After that, there's just a host of of diabetes medications before. They even start to talk about anything like insulin or, or needles or things like that. There's a host of other medications. Your doctor will decide, you know, which one is the best one for you. Don't don't worry about that. But you'll be put on medication, medications like that. In addition to that, you're going to be put on what's called an ACE inhibitor. An ACE inhibitor is a type of medication. Initially, is for blood pressure, but it works with the kidneys. But in people with diabetes. ACE inhibitors help to protect the kidneys. And so it's just almost like a vitamin for people who have diabetes. Whether you have hypertension or not, he's going to put you, he or she's going to put you on an ACE inhibitor, and that's going to benefit you. And if you happen to have any problems tolerating the ACE inhibitor, they may use an ARB, an ARB. But one of those two is going to be there. So the first one being metformin. The second one being an ACE inhibitor. The third one will be what we call a statin. Um, it's a medication that lowers your cholesterol. What studies have shown that when people with diabetes are put on a statin, regardless of what their cholesterol is, it, they have better outcomes. They do better. They have fewer strokes, fewer heart attacks. So it doesn't matter if your LDL is below 100 and, and it's great from, from that standpoint. Your doctor is going to put you on a statin because just the people on statins with diabetes do better than the people um, with diabetes that aren't on statins. And so a low dose statin they're going to be put on, but certainly we're going to be looking to lower your bad cholesterol, your LDL, below 100 and maybe even below 80. So look for a statin if you're not on any medication. If you're over 50, which uh, most of you probably will be, we're going to be looking for a little bit of a baby aspirin every day too. But that's going to be you know, those little medications. So don't think, oh, all that the doctor's throwing a million medications at me and I don't, I don't, I don't want to take all this medicine. This is, this is the product of years of research, years of people dying of heart attacks and strokes and taking sugar pills versus the actual interventions. And so you're here right now. You get to benefit from that research. The research that shows that people do better with on a baby aspirin a day, that they do better on an ACE inhibitor, they have less incidence of, of, of kidney failure and kidney problems. People on um, on statins have fewer heart attacks and strokes. And then obviously, you know, people on the diabetes medication, they're going to have their blood sugars go down, and a whole long list of things that go wrong in diabetics. All those things go down. So this was just a short sort of overview of what's going to go on when you, with your new diagnosis of diabetes. Uh, we would encourage you to go to some nutrition counseling because that's very good. Find out what specifically, you know, what sugars you have. You know what you can eat, but what specifically does that mean for me? So I think a good nutrition consult will be good. And then if you have any questions about specific medications, um, how long we're going to take, 
what what blood we're going to take, how often I'm going to see you, how often we're going to draw blood. Ask your doctor when they come back in. That's pretty much for now. Take it easy and good luck. I'm Dr. Greg Hall.